Hey guys, John V from Phone Arena here. You're watching our in-depth video review of the HTC One M9. HTC doesn't try to change up the recipe it already established with the M8 just because the M9 follows in the same tradition of being a premium made smartphone. It's still out of all the smartphones out there, one of the more attractive looking ones with its meticulous design. With this year's model, however, though, they've kind of changed it up a little bit. There are some subtle changes, but for the most part, it looks identical. Now, the biggest change here is the new jewelry grade dual tone finish of the handset. Our particular model here is the gold on silver. So you have a silver backing here and it's accented with the gold trim bezel around the sides. They have a gold on gold, which is an old gold handset. And you also have the gunmetal gray version. Now it looks appealing, nice contrast. And with the metal design, of course, it gives it that premium aesthetic. It has a new scratch resistant finish. And this time around, it's not as slippery as last year's model. Still relatively easy to hold in hand, fair amount of substance. It has all the qualities you want in a premium made smartphone. Um, and But with the uh, new dual tone finish, it makes a gap around the sides of the phone. So it has a little bit of a sharper feel when you hold it. Now, although it is, it does feel sharp, it just gives a little bit more grip when you hold it in the hand. Overall though, the design is just immaculate out of all the smartphones out there, despite being a recycled one, it still is pretty attractive in its own right. And they made some logical changes too. For example, the power button is no longer on top. It's now been uh, placed on the right side, so it's a lot more accessible. You don't have to stretch your finger. The volume buttons are now separated. It still has a micro SD card slot to supplement its internal storage capacity. And you have iconic design elements such as the dual front firing speakers with HTC boom sound. But this year's uh, model now offers uh, Dolby surround audio support. And it still has the IR blaster on the top edge. On the bottom, the micro USB port, three and a half millimeter headset jack, but probably the biggest change to the handset is in the rear where we have now a new 20 megapixel camera which replaces the ultra pixel camera from before. Nowadays, a lot of the flagship devices out there are going with quad HD screens, but HTC opted to stick with a 1080p screen. So it's a 1920 by 1080 Super LCD 3 display. While that's not bad in terms of pixel density count and it's super sharp, very detailed, you kind of think about the competition out there, how they pushed the envelope by having quad HD. It would have been nice to have it but it still works out well with a 1080p resolution. Uh, the improvements made with the brightness output, the display here now achieves a brightness output of 507, 508 nits, which is marginally better than its predecessor. So it's a little bit brighter. And with that, of course, it's more than visible outdoors, even with the sun present. However, though, when it comes to the color temperature, it actually is a, a drastic change from the M8 before. Now, it now has a color temperature of 8,100 Kelvin, which is a little bit out there. So with that, it tends to give the, uh, the display a colder look to it. So it tends to favor the color blue more so. With that, it gives it a little bit more saturation. That's good and bad depending on how you look at it. It's good that uh, it's very vibrant and colors have a nice pop to it. But when it comes to color reproduction, it's not really the most accurate. Like we said, it kind of tends to favor a bluish tinge. Overall though, a 5 inch 1080p screen is good and it works, but it'd been really nice and more compelling if they opted to give it a higher resolution screen. Sense has always been one of the more favorable customized Android experience. And with Sense 7.0, it takes the usual evolutionary um, jump versus Sense 6.0. Now visually, it might look kind of similar. You have common staples like HTC Blink V in the leftmost panel. So it aggregates all your social networking content. And you have the same motion launch gestures from before. So you can unlock the phone by just swiping up when it's turned off. You could turn on the screen by double tapping it and even launch the camera app all from a locked position. But the changes are, you know, visually a little bit more subtle. You can see it here with the clock widget. It has an italicized font there and still has, it still exhibits the same clean, modern looking UI that we know and love with Sense. There's some new additions though that really enhance it, in particular, the level of personalization with the interface. 
Now there's a hub where you can download all sorts of different themes and they'll change things up like the wallpaper, the color accents, and even down to the, uh, the icons of the applications. And you can even have the ability to change up or rearrange the menu buttons themselves too. So it gives users a, you know, a higher degree of control in the way the, you, the interface is uh, set up. And on top of that, if you don't like the ones that they offer, you could actually make your own customizable one by using a picture that you snap. It basically analyzes the image and from there generates one that's, uh, that fits well. Another new addition is the HTC Sense Home widget. Now this is pretty good if you're the type of person who likes to be organized. Just because um, it's it's uh, organized with um, it's organized to know when you're home, you're out, or work. Now the cool thing about it is that it'll change. Um, you know, it'll intelligently provide logical applications. So if you're at home, you might see more social networking apps because you like to do that when you're at home. If you're at work, you're gonna have things like the calendar, mail apps at your disposal, and when you're out, it gives things like Google Maps, so it's always on there, and it'll change over time depending on your usage. Overall though, Sense, Sense 7.0 on top of Android 5.0.2 uh, Lollipop is pretty convincing. It's not um, you know, totally feature switch. It might not really appeal too much to power users who want a high degree of productivity just because you don't have that true multitasking aspect where you could have two apps running side, side by side. But regardless of that, it still has an appealing look to it and with the new personalization quality with it, it can't be touched in terms of the visual department. In the past, HTC has always talked big about the Ultra Pixel camera and its phones, like the M7, subsequently the M8, but with the M9, they've ditched the Ultra Pixel camera in the rear. It's been replaced instead by a 20 megapixel camera, which is a considerable upgrade compared to the 4 megapixel camera of last year's unit. But the Ultra Pixel camera's not gone entirely. They've just placed it on the front as being the uh, front facing camera. Now, before I go into the quality, let's just talk about the camera interface itself. It's kind of similar to what we saw with uh, Sense 6.0 last year with the M8. It has a good mixture of shooting modes and manual controls. You'll be able to adjust the ISO, the exposure, the white balance and whatnot. And you have common you know, shooting modes such as panoramic, split capture, photo booth. And it even has a bokeh mode um, which achieves that bokeh effect that we saw with last year's duo camera system. Although the processing time is a little bit longer, but the, uh, the effect is still achieved nonetheless. Now, the biggest opportunity with the M8 last year was detail. It just lacked in that department. Therefore, you really couldn't crop your photos afterwards that well. You didn't have as much versatility in that, but they kind of solved it here with the M9 and the 20 megapixel camera. It takes some amazing looking photos outdoors where a lot of sunlight is present or where there's you know, sufficient lighting in general. Uh, detail's not a problem. You get some sharp looking visuals. You can even make out things like the license plate on a car from a good distance away whereas before with the M8 it would have been garbled looking so you do gain that level of flexibility in being able to crop your photos later on now where it, even despite excelling in the outdoor scenery it kind of falters under lower light and that's the biggest disappointment and complaint we have the, with the M9 uh, under lower lighting conditions uh, photos tend to look a lot more smudgy softer toned it's just a total wash you'll be surprised by the results um, in fact it seems as though the M8 camera does better with lower lighting performance um, there is an HDR mode to try and compensate for things like that in lower lighting conditions but since it, ha it has a tough time handling dynamic range, uh, it tends to, you know, uh, be more prone to blurring. And on top of that, the images still just come out a little bit on the flat side. So we're really disappointed. As far as the front-facing camera is concerned, you won't be disappointed by the Ultra Pixel camera. You can get some sharp-looking selfies with a good amount of detail. The M9 now features 4K video recording, which is great. Um, it's probably the mode you want to choose when shooting videos just because you get a great amount of detail capture with it. And for the most part, it does the job, it gets the job done. Uh, the focus is a little bit fidgety. It's constantly going in and out. Um, it's just searching for whatever's coming up. Um, but you know, we really can't complain about the 4K capture, but uh, looking at the 1080p video recording quality though, it's unfortunate. It, it's not really all that great. You get some, you know, softer looking tones in it, and it just doesn't seem like a 1080p video we could use. 
Worth yet is the low lighting performance. Uh, you're not gonna be able to use it. You're gonna see a lot of noise. You get poor details and heavy artifacting. All that dashes any hope in making it suitable. The gallery itself now offers several new photo, photo editing tricks that you know people really like. So you have the usual stuff. You could actually touch up the photos, adjust the contrast. Um, you could add some frames to it. But now they have these artistic looking you know, options and effects as well. You have things like shapes, photo shapes, prismatic, and you even have things like double exposure where it takes two faces, combine them together. But the prismatic shots, uh, you know, effects are pretty cool. You get some artsy looking things and you definitely can achieve some really cool stuff. The same thing kind of applies for double exposure. So you could take two images together and it just puts them on top and you could uh, arrange it in a way that it has a very professional look to it. And being a multimedia consuming device, we can't find any fault with the HTC One M9. It's pretty fantastic. You could stick with the Google Play Music application for your music listening needs. But of course, it comes with the Sense music player as well. It has the same modern design language as the interface itself. Very clean. Um, and you even have a cool visualizer mode when you're playing a song, which also displays lyrics as well. Now, with the dual front firing HTC Boom Sound speakers, it has a pretty good quality to it despite the fact it has a lower output of 72.8 decibels which is a smidgen lower than last year's M8 but nevertheless with the Dolby Audio Surround uh, option music mode it gives the audio quality a better sound fidelity in, in that mode however its usefulness is and presence felt most when you're watching videos with the Dolby Audio Surround sound support on and it's placed in theater mode you get a greater layer of depth with the audio experience. And of course, it plays all sorts of videos fine with the sharp display, good vibrancy. It's perfect for the occasion. We really can't complain about the call quality with the M9. It's just top notch, just like last year's model. The earpiece is strong, it's vibrant. You're not gonna have any issues using it in noisy environments. Voices on both end, ends of line are distinct, clear, and more than audible. And when you use a speakerphone, you get the same fantastic results as well. Unfortunately though, we're kind of disappointed with the battery life. Now the M9 sports a slightly larger 2840 milliamp hour battery, which is a step up from last year's model. But in our battery benchmark tests, uh, it actually achieves a lower rating. Specifically, it gets a total of six hours, 25 minutes from a full charge, which is short of the M8's tally of seven hours and 12 minutes. Now you kind of think going with a 1080p screen and also a more energy efficient processor would actually increase the battery due to the larger capacity also, but that's not the case. Despite that, it's nothing more than average. You'll get a solid day of, of usage out of the battery. If you're a power user, you might be a little bit more, more conservative with your usage, um, but in a greater scheme of things, we would have liked to see it last a little bit longer, but that's not the case. Last year's M8 was a good smartphone, but it wasn't great. And as we've seen, the good was in the fact that it was a beautifully designed smartphone, but it kind of squandered in other areas, more precisely the camera department. And in the face of some of its esteemed competitors like the Galaxy S5, the Note 4s, and even the other devices out there like the G3, it didn't quite spark as great of an interest that it should have. But now we have the HTC One M9, a refined version of its predecessor. And this handset, although it looks kind of similar, it bears some new improvements and changes that will hopefully give some notoriety again to HTC in the high-end space. Now, if there's one word that best describes the HTC One M9, it's evolutionary. It's not a dramatic change or shakeup from the M8 before it, but has enough refinements to make it a flagship smartphone every bit. Now, it goes to show that this handset continues to be one of the best looking devices out there. HTC has an impeccable track record when it comes to designing smartphones and shows here with the M9. It's gorgeous from head to toe and you have that premium quality that you don't tend to see too often in the high-end space, which is mainly dominated by a lot of plastic 
phone still even to this day. But you know, the downside is that they kind of disappointed us in the low lighting performance of the camera as well as the um, the uh, battery life, the hand said. It's just not up to par to what we want in a flagship device. Granted, the new Sense 7.0 experience is a good step, a good direction that continues the trend of what Sense is all about. It doesn't do enough to really detract us away from the poor qualities of the aforementioned areas. Now, the handset's gonna go on sale in the US. You could probably pick it up um, for around $200 to your contract with most carriers. It's, you know, fitting. You have a device that has expandable storage, you know, decent specs. But when you think about what's coming out in the near future, the competition, the kind of specs they're packing, um, it's a really tough call whether or not you should pick the HTC One M9. But if you really pride on the design more so than anything else, you won't be disappointed by this device. So if you guys want to learn more about the HTC One M9, you can check it out on our website, phonerena.com. Thanks for watching.